announcements. What's happening next week? Chili cook-off. The chili cook-off is next week. $3 for children, $5 for adults, Twelve fifteen, right after service. And we invite you to come so we can see who is the chili cook extraordinaire when we taste, oh, taste and see that the chili will be great. So we invite you. Also, I have a special request to say hello to you all from Meg and Charlie Guyton. For those who know them, I promise that I will say hello. So y'all make sure to let them know that I did my part. And I want to shout out the men who gathered recently to kind of resurrect their men's gathering, breakfast, and studying a book. It is so magnificent. On their very first time together again in a while, there were 10, and I think another two were like counting me in. So I'm just thankful for the men of our church and the ways they are wanting to gather. And lastly, this evening, anyone know what happens this evening? Yes, the worship experience. Did you say praise break? Yes, all of those things. We're going to praise the Lord in a different and new way over in where? Santa's Hall at 7 o'clock. So those of you who've been saying, I mean 6 o'clock, 6, 6, 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock. I'm coming at 7, it'll be over. At 6 o'clock.
mention in Romans 8, number 887, as found in our United Kingdom. Who shall separate us from the love of, God, of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loves us. We are sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus.
Who's had that happen? Yeah. I, don't, I don't remember anything like that happening. That is amazing. You don't remember anything like that? I hope it never happens to you. <laughs> and so my question for you is, did you?
verses from Matthew 5, 21 to 24, and the second is from Matthew 18, 21 to 22. Let us hear the word of the Lord. If you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift to the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. And the second scripture. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. The word of the Lord must be. Let me begin by saying, I missed y'all so much last week. <laughs> I know it was only a week that I was gone, but when I was here this morning, I'm like, man, it felt like forever. I really missed being here. Um, and as I was driving to North Carolina, I went to North Carolina last week, I was driving, the sun was shining, then there was a sudden thing that interrupted my normal pattern. And I was driving, the sun was out, it was about 40 degrees, it was totally unexpected. I said, what is this white stuff in the air that seems to be falling off the back of this 18-wheeler? And then I realized it was not falling off the back of the 18-wheeler, it was snow, yes. And so there are things that happen in our lives sometimes that interrupt our patterns. And every now and again, it is great when our patterns get interrupted. I'm a math person. I like patterns. I like to be able to figure out what's next. And every now and again, when something happens that interrupts that, it's really fantastic. And I actually think, like, what does that have to do with this morning? Stay with me. So I actually think <laughs> that that's one of the things that happens in today's scripture, a pattern is interrupted. I was in a conversation with a friend recently, and this particular day was one of those days and she was not having it, y'all. She was not having it, and she was running down all the people that frustrated her nerves, that she didn't like, that just got under her skin, and you know, the pastor part of me that needs to be a compassionate listener. I listened and I shook my head and like, yes. And the list kept getting longer and longer. And then I asked the question. I said, tell me who you like. <laughs> and it was such an interruption, right? You went, what? It was such an interruption in her train of thought that this person just kind of stopped. And as if it was something magnificent and profound, and they had to think about it for a moment because they were in a zone and in a mode. And as the person began to think about it, and I asked the question, she did come up with three names. So <laughs> thankfully, I was one of those names. At least, <laughs> at least that time, I might not have been on that list if she was talking to somebody else. But that time. I got to be on the good list. So in this morning's scripture, we are talking about forgiveness. Know that we have been on this whole journey of healing. Do you want to be made whole? And there is a healing power in forgiveness. And forgiveness is such a big thing in Christianity that we often don't talk about that in the first scripture that was read, the scripture says, hey, if you remember that your sister or brother has an ought against you and you're bringing your gifts to the altar, drop what you're doing, go get that relationship right, and then come and offer your gift. That's a huge thing that lets us know it's 
important. So in today's scripture, the second one that was read, um, Matthew 20, we have Peter, and Peter goes to Jesus. Y'all, let me confess that I really like Peter. He's one of my faves. You know, Peter is ready to walk on the water, even though he might be afraid. Peter is like, what? I'm going to pull out my sword and cut off an ear. Not that I would ever do anything like that. I'm just saying I like Peter and the fact that he is so passionate about so many things. And so Peter, I don't know what is going through his mind, but he goes to Jesus and he says, all right, Jesus, if a sister or brother sins against me, how many times do I need to forgive them? Because right before this, Jesus is talking about, you know, if someone sins against you, go to that person. Try to get it right. If they don't hear you, if it doesn't work out, bring somebody else with you to try to get it right. Because Jesus is saying that relationships are important. And then he says, because wherever two people are in agreement on this earth, they can ask anything. And it will be done. So I can imagine Peter is sitting there and he's listening to Jesus and he's hearing these things. He's like, yeah, that sounds cute and everything. But how many times do I need to forgive? And he says, well, seven times. And I'm sure he thought not only was that enough, that was more than enough. Because culturally speaking, there was kind of a limit. You get about three chances. And then I'm justified in what you're about to receive. I'm justified in getting even. So he doesn't just say three. You said, what, seven? So that's like twice as many plus one. And Jesus says, no, not seven times, but 77 times in this version. But what does the other version say that you've heard? But what? Seventy times seven. That is an absurd number of times that I need to be expected to forgive somebody. Because who's keeping track? Like, you maybe are on, what is 70 times seven? Matthew 4. 490. What happens when you get on number 489 and I have my paper because I've been checking them off? You're about to be in trouble. So it seems absurd and I think Jesus says something that's so hyperbolic because he has to interrupt Peter's pattern and in many ways interrupt our own pattern. Because when people sin against us, when people do things that we don't like, because there's some frustrating people in this world, and um, you might be one of them, <laughs> and me too, but we can be frustrating. And there are times when we are ready for retribution. You ever said to yourself, you got one more time. <laughs> you have one more time to come at me like this and then watch what happens. Maybe y'all are more spiritual and deep than I am. Um, and so, you know, someone said there was this thing called, like, you know, unlimited retribution. In other words, you're going to, oh, you think you're going to come and, and, and kill my cow? I am burning up your whole entire farm. That's what's going to happen, right? And so what we did to get even didn't seem to match what should be done. So then there's this little law that says, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. So at least if we're going to get even, make sure it matches. So if you're going to come and poke out my eye, I'm not going to set you ablaze, but I might poke out yours. If you come and snatch out my tooth, I'm not going to torture your whole family, but I might snatch your tooth out. And so Jesus, however, is interrupting this pattern of retribution that stops a person from even thinking about, how can I get even? 
Because we may not start there, but sometimes after we experience hurt and pain, time after time again, I want you to suffer the way you made me suffer. And what actually happens is we become different beings. But when we're able to practice forgiving, we are being invited. It is an invitation to transformation. So when Jesus says, not seven times, but 70 times seven, it's like going to the judge with all of your complaints and everything that has happened and you're ready for the moment when you can get even and they offer you an opportunity for healing. You're offered an opportunity for transformation. Because to move from retribution and getting even and retaliation to thinking in terms of 70 times seven, you're asking the question as my husband and I were in a conversation, what kind of person do I have to be to forgive somebody that many times? And for most of us, that means I have to be transformed into someone that I'm not right now. For many of us, that means that I have to be more in love with learning to love people than being in love with loving my offenses. Do you ever meet people who get offended all the time and we don't really want to not be offended? In fact, I want to be offended because it justifies what I'm getting ready to do right now. But in order to exist in love, we have to become different people. And so I want to be clear, what I am not saying is that forgiveness means um, that I agree with what has been done to me. Forgiveness does not mean I condone your actions, kind of like our daughter when she was in elementary school, I forgive you. But don't you do that again. You didn't, that wasn't okay. That's not okay. Forgiveness also is not about staying in a situation that is not safe. So I am not talking about physical and mental abuse. That is not what I'm talking about, even though forgiveness is in there. We're talking about when we, when we are in a place of safety, and we have friendships that are cultivating, and we're cultivating relationships with family members, members of our congregations. What does it mean to love enough to forgive? Do you want to be made whole? And sometimes the answer is, you know what? I'm not ready yet. <laughs> and understanding that forgiveness is a process and knowing that forgiveness transcends who we are and requires a reliance on the Holy Spirit because it does not make sense sometimes to forgive someone over and over and over again, especially in a society where we're quick to cut people off. But Jesus, is inviting us to grow in love by interrupting our pattern that says you are justified in retaliating. Because that says even if I feel justified, I don't want to be the person that that will turn me into. Will we accept Jesus' invitation to be transformed. In this world, often we want to give up friendships or we will give up friendships because we want to be right. Is it more important that we are right? Or is it more important that we remain in community with each other? 
On Friday, I was able to participate as one of the newer members of the God Squad. And so we get together and have conversations. It's a pastor, a rabbi, and a priest. Almost sounds like the beginning of a joke, doesn't it? But <laughs> it actually is a pastor, a rabbi, and a priest. And we're having conversations. And it was all around friendships. And what makes us stick through being friends with all of the divisions that we have. And I believe at the core is this idea of love in which forgiveness is rooted. Now, one of the reasons that we also forgive, we say it all the time when we say our prayer together, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who are trespassing against us or our debts, when we consider ourselves and the things that we have said, the things that we have done, the ways that we have not lived up to who God is calling us to be, and yet God forgives us and loves us and gives us another chance, who are we not to do the same? for others. And I recognize that this is hard stuff. And we're not always in a place where we even want to. In fact, don't tell anybody who said this, um, but I often say when Jesus is on the cross and he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing, I wonder if he's like, Father, you forgive them. Not ready yet. I'm getting there. But I am at the place where I can at least because forgiveness is a process. It is something that has to be practiced. And sometimes we've got to remind ourselves that we have forgiven this person. Somebody ever make you mad? And you start remembering all the times that you got a checklist right in your head. And before you know it, well, this is me, I'm talking about me, y'all. Before you know it, you're like feeling all those emotions all over again. We have to remind ourselves, oh yeah, I forgave them. And so I'm not going to run down the list, even though I have to work on what that means for me. And it requires an act of the Spirit. Now for those of you who still are like, yeah, Pastor Latricia, I hear you, but that's not enough for me to deal with forgiveness. I know it can lead to healing and healing of my spiritual self, and it can be transforming, but I just need a little bit more. Well, I want you to know that I looked it up, and according to the Mayo Clinic, there are also some health benefits to healing or to forgiving and not holding grudges. Like, it actually has heart benefits. It be we have a better heart. Our heart operates better when we forgive and don't hold on to grudges. Our blood pressure can get lower. It affects our mental health because we have less anxiety and depression. And it is even helpful for your immune system. Somebody in here is stopped up. Because you won't let it go <laughs> in a different area in your life. So when we practice forgiveness, it can affect we are healthier people and we get to be more spiritual. So will we be invited to learn to forgive so that we can lose the things that need to be loosed in our entire being? and be more like Christ. This is the word of God for all of us. Thanks be to God. We want to invite, now that we're being loving and forgiving people, what a wonderful time to invite new members in to be a part of our family. So we had several already joined at 8.30 this morning. If you are here and you are joining this morning and we've chatted, we invite you to come forward. Is there anybody here at this service? <laughs> Give them a hand.
questions and you will respond with I do or I will as appropriate. I'm so excited y'all. This is great. They could have picked anywhere and they love y'all so much because you're so hospitable that they are here with us this morning. So my question to you is do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? And if so, say I do. I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil and oppression in whatever forms we find them? I do. I do. Do you confess Jesus as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as Lord? I do. I do. Will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? I do. I do. I do. I do. Yes. Will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries by faithfully participating with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. I will. Thank you. And at this time, because being a part of the congregation is not just what individuals do, but we live together as a community, we nurture each other as a community, as we work together, I invite us to all say the following. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and
that we will be made whole spiritually and emotionally and physically and that our immune systems will work better. <laughs> Both of 